Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the USMLE Coaches Corner. My name is Dr. Paul. One of the most common questions that we get here is, what do I do to do well in my exams? Meaning, what do I use? What steps do I take? And so today what I want to give you is three simple steps. Keep it simple. Three steps to absolutely crushing your exams. Now, within each of these steps, there are some things that you're going to have to do in order to get the most out of them. I will walk you through that today. But if you are interested in figuring out exactly what you need to do to crush your step one, your CK, your step three exams, stick around. This one is for you. Now, before we dive in, as always, if you find this to be useful, the only thing I ask is that you hit that thumbs up button below. If you are not yet subscribed and you want me to let you know every time we release brand new videos just like this, hit that subscribe button below, set up notifications. That is exactly what I will do. All right, guys. So I have some notes here just to make sure I don't miss anything. There are three simple steps that you need to take, and I'm going to just list them here and then I'll go through them. So number one is, of course, exposing ourselves to the material. How we do that is dependent on you. Number two is fixing your weaknesses. Number three is reassessing ourselves to make sure we're improving consistently. So let's dive into each one of these. Number one, exposure to the material. This is simply that phase where you're starting your prep. Now, even if you're just finishing your basic sciences, if you haven't done a thorough review of everything, you need to re-expose yourself. This is why uh, courses are great, uh, video courses, uh, because they'll walk you through everything in a more time-constricted manner, exposing you to what's high yield, what's important, so that you can then create your, uh, your, your studies based on that information. Uh, so videos are good books. You could follow along in the first aid. This is, of course, not a thorough deep dive. This is exposing yourself to what you need to know. Uh, questions. Questions are an integral part of the exposure to the material phase. One of the things I always recommend to students is do a review of everything at least once. Um, not It doesn't have to be thorough to the point where you're going to get a 260 on your exam, but do a review of everything at least once before you dive in your questions because you want to at least have some sort of understanding of the material and freshness of the material before you dive into questions. Otherwise, you're going to do very poorly, but not because you don't know it, because you just haven't been re-exposed to it. There's a difference between getting killed on a block of questions when you've been studying hard versus getting killed on a block of questions when you haven't seen anatomy or embryo or histo uh, you know, for 20 months, if that was your, in your very first semester. So re-expose yourself to the material. This is why um, things like uh, running through the first aid, uh, using a condensed video course like our crash course is is built for something like that. Just get yourself exposure to the material quickly so that you can then dive into questions. Now, questions are really the only objective way for you to identify your weaknesses. And this is really important. A lot of students dive into their prep and they think, I'll just do questions. That'll show me what I need to know. And a lot of students fall into that, that, that trap of more and more questions means I'm going to do better on my exam. And that's not at all the case. I've got lots of videos explaining why. Uh, but ultimately, questions are a tool to help you get better at questions, to help you build your endurance, but also to help you identify weaknesses so you can then go work on those weaknesses. If you identify the fact that you are absolutely terrible in cardiac anatomy, but you just keep doing more and more questions moving forward, but you don't actually take the time to address the fact that you suck at cardiac anatomy, then you're not going to get better because you're seeing cardiac phys, you're seeing renal embryo, you're seeing pulmonary histology, you're seeing all kinds of stuff and you're not focusing on the weaknesses. So step one, expose yourself to the material. Once you've done that and you've done questions and you've identified weaknesses, we move on to step two, which is then fixing weaknesses. Now, you are going to move on to step two while simultaneously continuing step one. You should still be doing questions, but part of your day needs to be dedicated to your weaknesses. Now, step one to identifying weaknesses, to, to, to fixing weaknesses is A, identifying them. Then part B is working on them, and C is having a strategy in place so that you can consistently review them and then turn them from weakness into strength. My recommendation is this. Once you've identified weaknesses, take some time every day to work on those weaknesses, create index cards, create your own drill sessions, create detailed notes that you can, or not detailed, but condensed notes um, that will allow you to review that information in an ongoing basis. And the way this works is, let's say I do a block of um, cardiac questions today, and like I said, I identify that cardiac anatomy is a weakness. Later in the day, maybe I'll take a couple hours and I'll go through cardiac anatomy. Now, don't use first aid 
to fix a weakness because it's a very superficial high yield resource. Dive into something more robust because if it's a weakness, that means you need to build the foundation and you can't do that through first aid alone. So let's say you turn back to your class notes or you go back to the textbooks uh, for cardiac, for anatomy, uh, whatever you use, make sure it's more robust so you deep dive. Now, based on that, create the study tool you will use moving forward. So let's just say for the sake of argument, we're gonna use index cards, old school index cards, which you know, even though everyone's digital, old school index cards are very valuable. Um, you could also do um, index cards on your phone. For example, our step one fast facts, uh, they're just swipeable index cards that are basically index cards, but on your phone. So that's an option too. You could use a PowerPoint, uh, you could use any sort of software online to build these and then just put them on your phone, whatever it may be. Take time to create something that you can cycle through. So let's say today I'm going to create 100 card index cards for cardiac anatomy, and then I've got that study resource. Tomorrow, I'm going to take some time and I'm going to review that. But then, hey, tomorrow I'm going to find some more weaknesses in another topic, and then I'm going to repeat. I'm going to create some, some more index cards, and then I'm going to build my stack of, of weakness review cards or whatever you're gonna use. Maybe it's just sheets of paper, whatever, I don't care. Have something. And then every day, you're gonna dedicate a period of your day to reviewing those weaknesses. So I'm gonna cycle through all of my index cards. Then as I got more and more information, I'll have more cards. But as time goes and I see them again and again and again, some things are gonna turn into strengths. You're gonna see this stuff so many times that you realize, okay, what was once a weakness of mine? For example, I could never remember um, you know, what each murmur sounded like, for example. Okay, now I know so well. I'm going to take those weak, those specific weaknesses that I now know are strengths, and I'm going to create a separate pile that I'm just going to call my strength pile. Now, this is really important. As you continue every single day to go through your weaknesses, every two to three days, take five, 10 minutes to just cycle through your strengths. The reason why is because it was once a weakness, it could turn into a weakness again. Take the time every few days to just refresh it so that it stays a strength. Now, as you get more and more of those weaknesses turning into strengths, your strength pile will build. And then you simply have less weaknesses and then you can spend more time just consistently reviewing your strengths as you move forward. Now, as you have fixed your weaknesses in, in, in step number two here, you need to reassess yourself to make sure you're making improvements. So my superficial recommendation is this. Get through all of USMLE World, or actually, we now recommend Amboss as our number one question bank, just because it has a lot of great tools inside of it that allow you to review information quickly. So go through Amboss once. Identify your weaknesses, create the notes like I mentioned, fix your weaknesses. Once you've done that, and you have confidently improved weaknesses, dive into your second question bank. Let's call that UWorld. Now, you're, you're going through UWorld here with the goal of confirming to yourself that everything that was once a weakness is now a strength. So just start diving into questions. Now, if you have still some remaining weaknesses that you haven't completely fixed, avoid doing questions in that yet, and instead focus on building blocks that are, in this in instance, mixed and contain everything that you deem to be your strengths. Now, when we do AMBOSS the first time, go through subject specific so that you can isolate those weaknesses to a specific organ system or a subject, and then once you do your second question bank to reassess yourself, you can mix it up. Now, like I said, make sure you only create blocks based on things that are strong. The reason why is because we want to take what we believe are our strengths and really test ourselves with brand new, fresh questions that we've never seen. Don't go through the same questions twice because you've already seen them. So you're going to take what you've learned, go through and reassess yourself with questions in UWorld. Now, if you identify things that you you thought you were good at, but you're, you're realizing based on questions that you're still weak, document that. Now, as you go through your index cards or whatever resource you're using, you can put a little star or just highlight something so that you know, this is what I thought was a strength and it's, it's clearly now a weakness. Go back, put that into your weakness pile and re-add that to your daily or twice daily regimen of review. And if you do that, what you're gonna do is you're going to have worked on it you thought it was strong, but you realize it's still weak. The only way to do that is with fresh questions. But this was your second opportunity to now fix something that could have really pulled your score down on exam day. So basically, we're, we're sort of figuring out what we're weak at, working hard to fix that, then reassessing ourselves. And then we're still pinpointing those remaining little weaknesses that could pull our score down. If we do this, then we're going to put ourselves in a scenario where we basically 
um, filtered through our, our knowledge bank twice to identify any weak spots and had the ability to fix them. Now, once you have gone through UWorld, so this is your second question, Mank, identified any remaining weaknesses, highlighted them in your review resource, index cards, just as an example here. Once you've done that and you've recycled yourself through all of those weaknesses a bunch of times again, and you've finished UWorld, that second question, Mank, and you've you're pretty confident at this point you've got no weaknesses. Now we dive into NBMEs. NBMEs are going to be fresh questions. We've put ourselves in a position where we believe we have no weaknesses, and now we're really going to test ourselves. In a test-like environment, under stress, this is where you really, really test yourself. And guys, there will be remaining weaknesses. Very infrequently does a student follow this advice because we work with tons of students one-on-one. -on -one. Very infrequently does a student do everything we've, we've said and have zero weaknesses remaining. Everyone's got something. Even the best test takers have something. And here's the key. That's okay. We want to find them and eliminate them before test day. Everything leading up to test day is to put ourselves in the best position to crush that exam. And if you follow this strategy, you're consistently working to find your weaknesses, right? You want to... There's this great saying, expose your weaknesses before your weaknesses expose you. So by putting yourself through this just again and again and again, reassessing, fixing weaknesses, reassessing, you're going to basically just reassess yourself out of any weaknesses. Then you go into your exam and you're so confident because you put yourself through three, four, five cycles of identifying weaknesses and fixing them that you're just so confident that you're going to go in and crush it. Now, students typically, if they don't work with us or they don't watch my videos, a lot of them just don't do this. And yes, some students can do their own thing and do well. Most students that I've come across over the years could always do better. Yeah, maybe you scored a 225 or your friend did, but they did it on their own terms. They just did a ton of questions and, and read first aid. Cool. Had they done it this way, they might have gotten a 250, 260. Now you are equipped with this knowledge. So let me run through it. Step one, you have to expose yourself to the material. I went through a bunch of different ways you can do that. My recommendation is first and foremost, go through, I recommend our crash course. It was designed to be used alongside the first aid, challenges you with questions based on the first aid and then explains everything. It's a great way to quickly and efficiently uh, expose yourself. I only recommend it because we built it for this purpose. It's 35 hours, it's fast. But if you don't wanna use that, use something to just expose yourself to everything again and again and again, then do some questions. Once you've, you've done questions and you're starting to ID weaknesses, fix those weaknesses. Remember, you're going to ID them, create a tool to help you review them, and then start that review. And then once you fix them, you're going to reassess yourself. Remember, first question bank, we recommend these days, Amboss. Second, UWorld. Once you've been through UWorld once and you identified any remaining weaknesses, then you're going to assess yourself with NBMEs. The way you use that, the NBME is go through it. Pick out the weaknesses that still remain, work on them for a couple weeks, take another NBME to assess yourself. While you are fixing weaknesses, do not forget to continue to review your strengths every day or so, every couple days even, just to make sure that you don't get come to this scenario where you work on your weaknesses down here and your strengths up here, and you work on your weaknesses so hard that your strengths start to come down, then they balance out. You don't want that. What you want is your strengths to stay high and your weaknesses to just come up and meet them at the same height. Follow that strategy, guys, and you will position yourself to do as well as you possibly can. Can I guarantee a certain score? No, but I can guarantee that if you follow this, you will put yourself in the best position possible to crush your exams. I hope that was helpful. If it was, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button below. If you are not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button, set up notifications. I will let you know every time we release a brand new episode. And if you do think that you have friends and colleagues that can benefit from this, don't hesitate to hit that share button below and share it with them. As always, I appreciate you guys sticking around to the end. I appreciate that you took some time to sit with me today. I will see you on the next episode.